And there's a question that arises again and again and again and again. And it's very rarely openly expressed, but is always implicit. So let's see if this story can allow us to glean what that question is and perhaps even evoke in us an answer that allows us to recognize what it is that happens when that uh, paradox of having arrived and perpetually becoming is uh, reconciled. It's the story of a great rabbi called Rabbi Pinchas. Now, Rabbi, rabbi Pinchas was much loved. He was full of love and the joy of life. When he walked down the streets, the children would grab his coattails and he would stop and tell them a little story or pat them and give them blessings. The synagogues were, the synagogue was always full. He had the merchants, the farmers, the traders all come to him for advice. When he went back to his house, there was always a bevy of women there with kugels, freshly baked, saying, eat my kugel and give me blessing. And he'd eat their kugels and say they the best he'd ever tasted. And then he would give them their blessing. But uh, Rabbi Pintas had a wish, a desire. Like the great rabbis before him, he wanted to write a book, a book chronicling his wisdom that could be handed down through the ages, as have been the books of the other great rabbis and prophets. But he had no time. His life was so filled with giving. His parlor was always full. There was never a moment. But this desire grew in him. He wanted to write down this wisdom. So one day, in desperation, he prayed to God. God, take these people away. Give me time that I can undertake this task. And God spoke to Rabbi Pinchas and said, You really want to be alone? Rabbi Pinchas said, Yes! Well, the next day was the day when preparations were going to be made for the great festival in which the little edifice, the soup cut, was built. But, unlike times before, when this day arrived, there would be people arriving at the rabbi's house to help him to build his little edifice. Nobody came. He walked down the streets and nobody greeted him. No children came to grab his coattails. The time of the Sabbath came around and no one came with googles. He sat with his lone piece of bread to break the bread by himself. He sat and wrote one page over and over and over again. But he was, he was, he was always listening and waiting for someone to come to his door. But nobody came. And the day of the festival came around. In the building of his own sukkah, poor Rabbi by uh, Pinchas, he hammered his thumb with his hammer. He pricked himself with the branches that were made the roof uh, 
of the edifice. He dropped a piece of wood on his foot. He hurt his back. And it was a rather ugly, bent looking building. But the day of that festival, unlike other times when people would come with food and joy and laughter, nobody came. Nobody joined Rabbi Pinchas in his sukkah. So alone, Rabbi Pinchas called on the prophets to come. He called on Aaron, he called on Moses, Elijah and other great ones. And they came in all the glory of their light, but they did not enter the opening of his sukkah. They remained outside. So finally, Rabbi Pinchas called on God and God came and stood outside the door of the edifice. And when Rabbi Pinchas invited God in, he said, I cannot enter where my children cannot enter. Rabbi Pinchas burst into tears and he said, please, please, let the people come. Let them come. And in that instant, people began to arrive. They bought food, laughter, music and joy as they entered Rabbi Pinchas's Sukkot. God said, you no longer want to be alone. Have time for yourself. Rabbi Pinchas joyously responded, no, no, let them come. Let life enter in. Rabbi Pinchas never wrote his book, but he's always remembered for the openness, the joy of his welcome. What is the question that we glean from this story. So often, so often present, rarely openly expressed, but always implicit. What is the question? We've had it on our lips before. What is this question? This question is, what about me? I never have time for myself. I never have a moment where I can find uh, peace, time to do what I want. Isn't it? Have we ever said this to ourselves? How many times have we said it to ourselves? Hmm. 
What about me? And what is the answer to this question that we realize that brings acknowledgement that that paradox has been reconciled, the paradox of having arrived, being present, and becoming. What is it that happens for us when these two come together, but only come together when there's no longer the question, what about me? When, when, we, when we open totally, there's no more me, and in that dimension, we receive everything. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Becoming is to do with mind and desire, mm -hmm. and that it happen, whatever happens, mm -hmm. is happening. It's like a doing or non doing. Yes. So, if we could let me go into more and more of this happening, mm -hmm. or accepting what All it right. is. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now you put it is, right. then becoming doesn't come into our mind. Mm. <laughs> so what's your experience of having arrived? Like arriving in a foreign place, knowing that something's finished in our life and a relationship or moving to another country or whatever. What happens? What has happened in our life in those circumstances to have arrived at a place, a state? What happens? We become more present. Absolutely. <coughs> when I went to Divine Mother and after the euphoria of the first two times with her, I, I knew it. I'd arrived. I was in the presence of God. I'd arrived. But when the euphoria left, the question was left, what now? What now? And what happens when we are in that place? What now? The receptivity, of course, but there's something behind that receptivity. What is it? That's the next step that comes about when this paradox has been reconciled. When we've arrived, we become present and still, aware, receptive. And life enters in. We have to answer the question first. <laughs>